R&B, soul, funk, and rock. You might be able to list a number of musicians whose catalogs include all of these genres. But if you leave Rick James and Prince off of your list, your list is incomplete. These two men had a lot in common. They were both excellent instrumentalists. They were both great singers with exciting stage presences. They both had a sense of style that seemed androgynous or downright feminine at times. Rick James started his own all-girl singing group. Prince started his own all-girl singing group. Rick James produced and wrote songs for a number of musical artists. So did Prince. Rick James didn't like Prince. And Prince didn't like Rick James' wig-wearing ass either. Let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about the most scandalous celebrities from yesteryear who make Ty's Hot Mess History Channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream. And comment, I subscribed, in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. Rick James was an American singer, songwriter, record producer, and musician. After an extremely troubled childhood and wild early adulthood, he was signed to Motown Records in 1966. Early on, he produced songs for some Motown acts including The Spinners and The Miracles. But it wasn't until 1978 that he released his debut album, Come Get It, which was immediately followed by two more gold-selling albums the next year, Bustin' Out of L7 and Fired Up. In 1980, Rick James went on tour, his tour being named after his second album released in 79, the Rick James Fired Up Tour. The tour started out with just Rick and his band, but Prince and his band would end up joining Rick as an opening act for 38 dates on this United States tour, which was a majority of the tour. And that ended up being a huge headache for Rick James, who described his own band as, quote, a bunch of friendly down-home brothers loved by everyone. Now, I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from, the uh, down-home brothers, if you will, don't look anything like this, but I'm sure that they were all great guys, especially compared to Prince's band who Rick James said were, quote, a bunch of snobs who never bothered to acknowledge my guys. Well, that's not cool. And in case you are wondering, that is exactly how Rick James sounds. So there. Sure, Rick James and Prince didn't like each other, but they had an actual rivalry. And it might be fair to say that Rick James started it. That is what Sheila E. said, or rather wrote, in this tweet in which she posted Prince's All Access Pass from Rick James' 1980 tour. So I'm going to share with you how Rick James might have started this rivalry and how he might have been the one who ended it too. Now, I will give you one spoiler alert. Everyone makes it out alive. Each guy certainly took his shots at the other, but it just makes for a good, funny story. Unlike the rap music rivalries that would become so common years later and still continue today that end with someone's funeral. So, Rick James had promoters telling him that Prince was influenced by his music and Prince was dying to tour with Rick. So Rick, feeling flattered, I'm sure, decided to give the up and coming new artist a chance. Prince's career was just starting to take off. Well, when Prince arrived, Rick James said that Prince never introduced himself, which according to Rick, was the first sign that things were starting off on the wrong foot, and also strange since I was the cat giving him a shot. Side note, for Rick James and a lot of black men over the age of, say, 60, cat means guy, not feline. Keep that in mind as we go, okay? Rick was not impressed with Prince's first show. In addition to calling it lame, here's what he wrote. Quote, he hardly moved. At the end of his set, he took off the trench coat and stood there in his bloomers. The crowd booed. I felt sorry for the cat. 
end quote. According to Rick, while he was performing, Prince was watching him from backstage and clearly must have been picking up some of his moves. Because as the tour went on, Rick James couldn't help but notice that Prince was copying him. He said that all of a sudden, Prince started flipping the microphone and putting his hand to his ear while he did call and responses with the audience. Now, I don't know if Rick James really invented that, but for the sake of this story, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Because according to Rick, he wasn't the only one who was seeing this happen. Other people started telling him that Prince was copying his style, his look, and his moves. So, Rick pulled Prince to the side to tell him to stop stealing his moves and to get his band to stop being pricks. Rick said that Prince agreed to stop stealing his moves, but I'm guessing that Prince said that with his fingers crossed behind his back because the style jacking persisted. Rick's main problem with Prince stealing his moves was that because Prince opened for him, it gave the audience the perception that Rick was stealing Prince's moves and not the other way around. According to Rick, quote, Prince was emulating my moves like a mother I know imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but because my act followed his, it looked like Rick James was copying Prince rather than vice versa. End quote. Rick James never held his tongue about his disdain for Prince. And while letting off some steam might have helped him to feel better temporarily, Rick just couldn't shake the feeling of being overshadowed by the new kid on the block. So he took things a step further than just trash-talking Prince to the media. According to Tina Marie, Rick James stole Prince's programmed synthesizers and used them on his own 1981 album, Street Songs, then sent them back to Prince with a thank you card when he was done. But Rick's frustration always got the best of him, and he kept publicly insulting Prince to anyone who would listen, saying things like, Prince is a mentally disturbed young man. He's out to lunch. You can't take his music seriously. So, Rick had a birthday party, and just to put Prince in his place, he didn't invite him. And Prince, being Prince, just to show Rick James, he crashed his little birthday party and brought his band too. Rick didn't appreciate that. So in his words, quote, I went over to his table, grabbed him by the back of his hair, and poured cognac down his throat. He spat it out and started crying like a baby. I laughed." End quote. Rick may have gotten the better of Prince on that night, but that didn't stop Prince from getting back at Rick. That 1980 tour was just the beginning of Prince's rise to stardom, and when Prince's name started really gaining some recognition, and Betty Gladden wanted his autograph when she saw him at an after party at the 1982 Music Awards, Prince refused. This really pissed off Rick James. Who was Betty Gladden? Well, Rick James' mother. Here's how Rick described the event in his autobiography. Quote, Mom was beautiful. She was impressed with stars and never tried to hide it. In fact, she collected autographs. Guess who I just saw, James? She said to me. Who? Prince. You didn't ask him for his autograph, did you? I sure did. Why? Because I like his music, son. I think he's great. Okay, so now you have Prince's autograph. I wish I did. When I asked him, he just turned around and walked away. You're kidding. No, I guess he don't like giving out autographs. That's all I needed to hear. I chased after that little turd. I caught up with him and was about to lay him out when his manager stepped in. Yeah. So basically, Prince hit Rick with the ultimate yo mama diss. No, yo mama can't have an autograph. By the time the incident was settled, Rick James had three things to be pissed about. One, that his mother asked for Prince's autograph in the first place. Two, that Prince refused her. And three, that Prince ended up apologizing and giving her the autograph. That part made him angry because what he really wanted was a reason to beat Prince's Heine. Now, what's the one thing that we can always count on men to fight over? Women. Don't get me wrong, Rick and Prince each had enough super freaks that they didn't need to share. Their fight over women was a professional one. 
You see, Rick had this awesome idea to start an all-girls singing group. It was an idea that, in retrospect, I'm sure Rick James wished he'd kept to himself. But he shared his idea with Prince's manager. Didn't go into a lot of detail, just kind of casually mentioned in a conversation that he was going to start this sexy all-female group called the Mary Jane Girls. Well, the next thing Rick James saw was Prince's all-girl group. He stole Rick's idea. Not only did he steal the idea for a sexy all-girl group, Prince also stole Rick's lead singer. Yes, the original lead singer for the Mary Jane Girls was supposed to be Vanity. She was Rick James' artist until Prince invited her on a date. He invited her to be his plus one at the American Music Awards and she never looked back at Rick James or his braids. Instead, she became the lead singer of Vanity Six. Prince's thievery didn't stop Rick James from seeing his vision come to fruition. He went on to create and debut the Mary Jane Girls, whose original lineup was Joanne Jojo McDuffie, Kimberly, better known as Maxie, Yvette Corvette Marine, and Cheryl Ann Bailey, better known as Sherry Wells with Candace Candy Gant coming in later as a part of the primary lineup, replacing Yvette Corvette. Rick's Mary Jane Girls outlasted Prince's Vanity Six and had more commercial success. Perhaps Vanity played herself by ditching Rick for Prince, who, in the tackiest way, renamed Vanity Six to Apollonia Six after Vanity quit the group. He literally kept the other two women, Susie and Brenda, right where they were with Vanity. I wouldn't be surprised if he made Apollonia wear Vanity's lingerie. But let me know your opinion. Did Vanity play herself or not? In addition to seeing more hit songs than Vanity 6, Rick James' Mary Jane Girls also got to see a little bit of Prince's drama. Check out this September 1983 issue of Jet Magazine, which just happens to feature Rick James on the cover. But this isn't about the cover story. There's a feature called Celebrity Beat, and it has a blurb about Prince acting a fool during one of Rick James' shows. I won't read the beginning of the story. Here is the important part. Quote, While Rick's Mary Jane girls were on stage performing, Prince started diverting the attention of the audience. As his bodyguard carried him around the auditorium like a groom carries a bride across a threshold. Prince kicked his feet into the air. Later, when Rick was performing, Prince rode his bodyguard piggyback style, causing some patrons to laugh. Although Rick was not distracted by the antics, his pal, rock star Rod Stewart, was annoyed by the behavior and let it be known." End quote. And there you have that. Now, just to give Prince the benefit of the doubt, that concert stunt in September might have been a reaction to some things that Rick had said in August. Rick was being interviewed by Dennis Hunt, and by this time, Rick had had it up to here with Prince. It had been three, going on almost four years of comparisons of Rick to this little dude in his purple underwear. So, after Prince went the sneaky route to start his all-girl group first, Rick went the very public route to diss Prince in the press. Check out this 1983 LA Times article to see what he said about the purple perpetrator. Rick snapped. Here's what the article read. Quote, Many people think that Prince's protégés, a sexy female singing group called Vanity Six, were the model for James's protégés, a sexy female singing group called the Mary Jane Girls. James refuted that notion. I'm tired of people saying I stole the idea from Prince, James snapped. I wouldn't steal anything from somebody like him. I had that idea five years ago, long before anybody heard of Prince. Besides, I wouldn't copy any crap like that Vanity Six album. I hate it when people say I'm following in Prince's footsteps. That's the biggest insult anybody can lay on me. I hate to be mentioned in the same breath with an overrated artist like him. I can't believe people are gullible enough to buy Prince's Jive Records." End quote. Well, now that we have the details of their fight over women, 
We can end this tale about an issue that Prince and Rick James had over a man. And that man was Eddie Murphy. Hmm. By the early 1980s, Prince and Eddie Murphy had already developed somewhat of a friendship. So it only made sense for Eddie to approach Prince to help him with some music after he tried to erase from our memories his cringeworthy track called Boogie in Your Butt. And Prince agreed to help Eddie. But something about working in the studio with Prince made Eddie feel uncomfortable. Thankfully for Eddie, his early 1980s fame had put him in a position to be close to a number of music stars who could help him out. And one of those stars just happened to be Rick James. Hearing that Eddie didn't want to work with Prince was all that Rick James needed in order to get on board. In his own words, there wasn't anything I'd rather have done than write a hit for Eddie and stick it in Prince's ear. Now, I don't know if he ever got to stick it in Prince's ear, but he did write that hit for Eddie. It was called Party All The Time. It stayed at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 for three weeks in a row behind Say You, Say Me by Lionel Richie. Party All The Time actually charted higher than any of Rick's solo tracks. His personal highest charting song was You and I, which peaked at number 13. So tell me what you think about it all. What started this rivalry? Rick James's jealousy or Prince's arrogance? Which all-woman group did you like better, Vanity Six or the Mary Jane Girls? Who won the rivalry in your opinion? Ultimately, I think that we, the fans, did because both of these guys gave us some amazing music that we can still enjoy and wild antics that we can still laugh at today. Rick James and Prince were just two of many, many, many men who had their eyes on vanity over the years. One of those many men became her husband, Anthony Smith. I published a video about that story that you can see here. My sources for this story are Glow, the Autobiography of Rick James, Rolling Stones Archives, 1982, Jet Magazine Archives, 1983, Consequence.net, and the Los Angeles Times Archives, 1983. Are you a content creator, influencer, or blogger who feels like your platform could use an extra boost? Are you thinking about becoming a content creator, but you don't know where to start and you want to be sure that you dot all of your I's and cross all of your T's? If so, Layla Lynn can likely show you exactly what you need to get on your way. Her fun new class is called The Business of Blogging with Layla Lynn, and in it, she is sharing the fundamental principles of blogging in 2022. Because let's face it, social media is a moving target, and what worked well five years ago is likely not what works well today. And with Layla Lynn, you're getting the information from someone who is successful at putting the principles to practice on her own social media platforms, and she literally has the credentials to back it all up as she holds degrees in social media marketing. Layla Lynn is a multiple six-figure earner whose first social media marketing course helped this channel go from earning $30 a month to earning five figures a month. I'm ready to dig in my heels and learn even more so that I can earn even more. Are you with me? If so, hit my link at the top of the description box and join her class to access this amazing, affordable advice from a woman who knows her business, the business of blogging. Are you suffering from thinning edges, traction alopecia due to tight hairstyles, dry hair or breakage? If your answer is yes to any of these, then Unique Organics has the products you need to bring your hair back to life. They have a long line of quality products ranging from alopecia oil to stress and postpartum hair oil as well as an anti-thinning organic shampoo and conditioner. Unique Organics plant-based products are made with ingredients that are scientifically proven to stop hair loss and promote growth. Visit their website at alopeciahairoil.com and also give them a follow on Instagram at uniqueorganics underscore hair care. Their links are in my description box.
If you have a business, product, service, YouTube channel, or social media account that you would like to promote on my channel, email me at taiwan at taisaidwhattaisaid.com to get rates for advertising on my community tab, my live streams, and or my edited videos, just like this one. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Thai Said What Thai Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that thanks button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.